humans. Welcome to the last tridimensional channel on YouTube. So let's begin to use the randomizer I coded in this video to get some new challenges. Okay, here we go. This is my fantastic app. Let's choose the surface and okay, yeah, yeah, could be better, but it's not that bad. I think we can work it. Okay, so it seems I'm going to design a 3D model using the parametric approach. It could have been worse. This is Artificial Marvin and you're watching the surface. <laughs> Okay, let's get to work. As usual, before even thinking about what to do, let's search for some ideas. In this case, my first thought was to create an object to be 3D printed. And the first thing people usually print with a 3D printer is a vase. Okay, I'm pretty confident in modeling something similar to a vase. Parametric modeling allows you to get uh, very natural and organic shapes. So I decided to take advantage of this thing and design a sort of abstract uh, organic 3D sculpture. Make sure it sound right, boys. Okay, let's begin. I think today I will improvise a lot. I don't recommend to use this technique if you already have in mind a specific shape for your project because parametric design is often unpredictable and can surprise you with a lot of completely unexpected results. What you have to do is just playing with parameters and leave the rest to the computer. I've generated some polygons and I tried to randomize their vertex in order to obtain some random shapes. And I'm already having some problems trying to avoid overlapping geometry. It sound right, boys. After a little bit of tweaking, I finally got the geometry not self-overlapping. Then I duplicated the geometry and gave it some offset in order to create a cylindrical shape. New problem alert! I was trying to subdivide those cylinders to have more resolution, but I failed. I couldn't even find the solution in Zvercek documentation. This time, I tried to use a new approach. Using this technique, it is often self-defeating trying to target a specific shape. It's much easier to create basic rules at the beginning and then play with the available parameters to get the results that best suits our expectations. In this case, our target will not be a finished product, but an algorithm that can generate a multiplicity of results. An algorithm is a set of rules that precisely defines a sequence of operations. For example, a cookbook recipe is an algorithm. It is used in the logic of all computer programs as well. Thanks Al, you're flawless as ever. I'm not human, after all. I started over with the modeling using a Voronoi geometry that allows me to have uh, some distorted geometry without any effort. What I'm trying to do is to stack multiple layers of polygons. All these polygons should have the same number of vertices, but their position should be randomized. Putting these polygons one upon each other, I could connect all the vertices in the vertical direction. I'm not sure yet how to accomplish this task, but we'll see.
You think it worked? Of course not. So I started over again. With this new approach, I can modify the randomness of the shapes, changing the dimension and the rotation of each polygon with enough precision. But I don't really like this result. It is too geometric and I was aiming for a more organic shape instead. And so I started over. This time I found a really clever method to control the geometry in the way I was looking for from the beginning. Starting from the base, I selected only some random faces to be extruded. With this method, I can control every single variable in this shape, like length, size, rotation and position for every single tentacle. Once everything is connected, I can start distorting the entire geometry to give it a more organic shape. And I think it is time to come to a final result, to end this design once and for all. After playing a lot with sliders and variables, and after generating a lot of iteration of this shape, I finally choose a shape to print. I did one last check to be sure it is actually printable. I even did a quick physics simulation to make sure this model will stay balanced. After discovering that this model will take 14 hours to print, I decided to remove all the supports, hoping that this decision wouldn't screw the 3D print. And I'm pretty sure it will come out as a tangled mess. A few moments later. After the first 30 minutes of printing, I already noticed I made some mistakes in the design. The printer left me with just a messy garbage. I think I'll come back to the drawing board again. Uh. So after this quick correction, I went to a more stable shape in order to prevent the print to be deformed by gravity. I quite like the new design. I really hope it works without further incidents. And there it is, the final result. In my opinion, I got a very interesting shape in the end. What do you think? Write your comments and suggestions in the section down below. If you like this video, please consider to give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until the next challenge! As always, thank you for watching. Bye humans!